This lesson, we're going to be looking at the default do get function. There's more information at developers.google.com forward slash app script forward slash guide forward slash web. And then within the web apps, it will give you some of the requirements for the web application. So script that can be published within the web app. So it's contained within the do get and the do or the do get or do post function. And these are the default functions that will run and return the HTML output. So there's a number of options when you are creating your HTML output. You can use templates, you can just use straight HTML, and you can also output text content. So you can find out more about what these options are when you go over to the HTML output. So this is how what we're going to be using. We're going to be creating an output from a file, creating the index file, and then outputting it using the do get. And notice that you always need to return the HTML service or you need to return some type of value in order for the web app to function. There's more examples, of course, on the website. And also within the content service. So this is going to be for publishing content. And it's a special callback function for the do get or the do post. Whenever it's been invoked, whenever you go to the web URL, it's going to return back whatever content is being output there. And in this case, they're just simply outputting regular text content. So let's go ahead and create that within our web app. So going into the editor and creating a function. And then this function is by default, it's do get. We're going to be passing the event parameters. And of course, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more later on. So we do need to return some type of content. And we're going to use the content service. And from the content service, we're going to simply be returning back string content to output. And this is going to create our basic web app. And then afterwards, of course, we're going to be introducing how we can use the files, output those as templates, and then output HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and also include CSS and JavaScript into our HTML output. So creating the text output content, we are ready to publish the web app. So going over to the top menu, select the publish from the top menu, and then select deploy as web app option from the publish menu. And here it's going to ask me what my project version is and some information about my project. So I'm just going to call it web app one, then it's going to ask me how I want to execute the app. So using what account I want to execute it. So I am going to be executing it as my default account. So that means that anyone going to the URL, it's going to be running the code under this account. You can also access the web app and ask for the user to accept permissions of the web app. And this is not something that I wanted to do in this case, uh, but this is always an option if you want to really control who has access to your web app and also track that information. You can do that as executing the web app. There's also who has access to the web app. So if you are working within an organization, you're going to have a fourth option here. So you've got only myself, which is the default option. So any, nobody else but your logged in Google account is, can access the web URL. If you go with the organization account, then you're going to have an option for anyone within the organization. If you select anyone, that means anyone with a Google account, and then anyone even anonymous means that it's a completely open web URL that anyone can access. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option. So now the project is deployed as a web app, and we've been given two web URLs. So we've got the main executable web URL. So this is the one for the executable files and the final URL that you're going to be sharing. When we go to the web URL, it outputs hello world. And then there's also the developer version. So the developer version and the output version means the executable version the executable version is the one where you're going to have your final code and where it's shared. The developer is the one that can only be accessed by app, uh, by accounts that are developing the application. So you can add more developers and then they can also have access to the developer URL. And of course, your account, it needs to be logged in in order to see the developer account content. And the big difference is that the way the content outputs with the developer account, you can update the code or the developer URL. You can simply update the code and it's going to already render out the new updates. So it's meant for development. But if you go to the regular executable, it's still going to have that old code running. So it's not going to update again until you deploy the or redeploy the web app. So go ahead and set up the do get and return the content service. 
and there's going to be more information coming up and we're going to start creating output using a template from a file. So that's still to come.